Oh hi, I'm the Heretic. The National Rifle Association, or the NRA, has marketed itself as the premier defender of gun rights and the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, the part that says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed by the government. So let's not beat around the bush. It's not. Despite what they say, the NRA was, in its younger days, a proponent of gun restrictions and continues to be to this day. Whatever your opinion on gun rights or of the NRA as an institution, everything I'm about to say is true, and my citations will be in the description below as usual. Even if you support the NRA, I would encourage you to be curious, because they aren't who you think they are. So the NRA is a non-for-profit organization involved in firearms education, meaning how to use guns safely as well as effectively through classes in its various publications. The organization was founded in 1871. Colonel William C. Church and General George Wingate, two Union officers from the Civil War, were frustrated at how inaccurate Union soldiers were during the Civil War only one out of every 1,000 shots fired from them actually hitting a Confederate soldier, prompting them to want to teach marksmanship to the next generation of soldiers to be more lethal to the soldiers of the enemy government. But these aren't knocks against the NRA. Instead, let's focus on what they're best known for, namely their advocacy for gun rights and defending the Second Amendment. It's no secret, one need only watch Fox News long enough and you might see one of their ads, or if there's an election coming up, they'll air an ad in your area for or against a candidate depending on their stance on guns. They present themselves as the premier defender of your gun rights against increasingly totalitarian political opponents who, according to the official narrative, seek to take your guns away and restrict your ability to buy them, which makes sense. I mean, just hear them in their own words. And it matters. We will take the big, and we will take the small, but we will keep fighting. When they give us that inch, that bump stock ban, we will take a mile. We are not here for breadcrumbs, we are here for real change. To say nothing of how the fake news media will constantly and consistently portray them as the evil, pro-violence boogeyman who wants everyone to be able to own semi-automatic assault rocket launchers. Sure, that's hyperbole, but check this out. Progressives are all too eager to portray the NRA as evil, heartless terrorists, especially after the Parkland shooting, where California high school graduate and son of an FBI agent, Daniel Bohr, made a name for himself as an anti-gun activist. Suffice to say, if anti-gun people are against the NRA, and you're a pro-gun guy, then maybe they aren't so bad. After all, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? Not so fast. In their efforts to discredit the NRA, many mainstream media sources have found examples of gun restriction legislation the NRA openly advocated for. But how can that be? The NRA is America's oldest pro-gun organization. Well, just hear them out. The NRA supported the National Firearms Act of 1934, which taxes and requires registration of such firearms as machine guns, sawed-off rifles, and sawed-off shotguns. Those aren't my words, it's quoted verbatim from page 22 and 23 of the March 1968 edition of the American Rifleman magazine, the NRA's own publication. Now the context of the article is in reply to an allegation by Senator Robert Kennedy that, when discussing the 1968 Gun Control Act, the NRA hasn't, quote, supported any legislation to try and control the misuse of rifles and pistols in this country, end quote. Basically, the NRA is bragging about supporting laws which increase the amount of money the government steals from you for trying to own a particular piece of property. Perhaps the words of NRA President Carl T. Frederick in a congressional hearing on April 1934 would be more convincing in regards to the disposition of the NRA at the time. Quote, I have never believed in the general practice of carrying weapons. I seldom carry one. I do not believe in the general promiscuous toting of guns. I think it should be sharply restricted and only under licenses. End quote. This article, which I remind you, is from the NRA's own publication, 
goes into even further details on their organization's contempt for your property rights. The title of the article is Where the NRA Stands on Gun Legislation. The subtitle of the article is 97-Year Record Shows Positive Approach to Workable Gun Laws. You know you're off to a wonderful start. Quote, The NRA supported the Federal Firearms Act of 1938, which regulates interstate and foreign commerce in firearms and pistol or revolver ammunition, and prohibits the movement in interstate or foreign commerce of firearms and ammunition between certain persons and under certain conditions. Quote, The NRA supported the original Dodd Bill to amend the Federal Firearms Act in regards to handguns when it was introduced as Senate Bill 1975 in August 1963. Among its provisions was the requirement that a purchaser submit a notarized statement to the shipper that he was over 18 and not legally disqualified from possessing a handgun. As a saving grace, the article points out that another, different bill proposed by Senator Thomas Dodd, which would have banned interstate sales of guns completely except to federal license holders who could only sell guns to each other out of state. So we should be fair here. Obviously, the NRA isn't an anti-gun organization, even at this time. However, there's yet another federal bill the NRA is supporting current at the time of publication. Two, actually, proposed by Senator Roman Hruska, as well as Congressman Cecil King and Robert Sykes, which, among other things, required the following. A. Requiring a sworn statement containing certain information from the purchaser to the seller for the receipt of a handgun in interstate commerce. B. Providing for notification of local police of respective sales. Which, as the Jews for the Preservation of Firearm Ownership, or JPFO, point out, is a registry list. C. Requiring an additional seven-day waiting period by the seller after receipt of acknowledgement of notification to local police. The reasoning for this is that the seven days is enough time for someone to cool down if they're about to commit a crime of passion, and even if they do, the notification of police will make their job of figuring out who done it a lot easier. But imagine if you had to wait for some asshole to be made aware of your intent before you're legally allowed to eat potato chips. Now imagine you had to wait an additional seven days. No matter what excuse you make, this is not justified. D. Prescribing a minimum age of 21 for obtaining a license to sell firearms and increasing the license fees. Hey, the government will enslave you for the purposes of getting you maimed, traumatized, or killed in Vietnam. But hey, they give you a gun three more years before you're legally allowed to defend yourself. E. Providing for written notification by manufacturer or dealer to carrier that a firearm is being shipped in interstate commerce. Why is it their business? F. Increasing penalties for violation. According to the state, exercising the rights the Second Amendment guarantees, which was written by the same guys whose constitution authorizes the legislative powers Congress was trying to use, is an even more severe crime than previously. Just go away. Anyways, this isn't even the full extent of the NRA's pro-gun control activities. The late Carl T. Frederick, NRA president, served for years as a special consultant with the Commissioners on Uniform State Laws to frame the Uniform Firearms Act of 1930, which were state laws passed in Alabama, Indiana, Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania, South Dakota, and Washington State, prohibiting access to guns for certain classifications of people, including anyone under 18 years of age, and requiring people to submit their personal information to police and get a literal gun license if you wanted to carry a gun in your car. Also, remember Carl Frederick? Yeah, he takes credit for writing some of those bills. Quote, any other instances of NRA support for worthwhile gun legislation could be quoted, but these suffice to show that Senator Kennedy's terrible indictment of the NRA is groundless. I think I've made my point, and I didn't even mention the NRA's support for the 1968 Gun Control Act in question. 
I mean, it was kind of implied in the 1968 article. Franklin Orth, vice president of the NRA, said the following to Congress. Quote, We do not think that any sane American who calls himself an American can object to placing into this bill the instrument which killed the President of the United States, referring to the Kennedy assassination just five years ago, basically tying support for even more restrictions to patriotism, because nothing says American like government restrictions. The best you could say about the NRA at this point is that they're misguided. We have a very clear picture of what the NRA was, a far cry from the gun rights advocates they purport to be. But here's where the narrative gets funny. According to both progressive media outlets and the NRA themselves, on their own websites, there was a shift in the early to mid-70s. After agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, or simply the ATF, shot and paralyzed NRA member Kenyon Balu, who was suspected of hoarding illegal guns. The shift argues the NRA changed its attitude on guns completely, becoming more hardline against gun restrictions and more diligent in their adherence to the Second Amendment, which, you know, is something I completely understand. Small sparks can start raging infernos of change, and leadership can have a change of heart, either through changes in disposition or replacement. It's around this time, in 1975, that the NRA launched its lobbying arm, the Institute for Legislative Action, or ILA. So surely they must have come to their sense at this time, right? No! The Firearm Owners Protection Act was signed into law in 1986. Among its provisions, the ban of all fully automatic weapons manufactured after the passage of the law. The Institute for Legislative Action's website called it an impossible victory. Though in the article, they try really hard to backtrack, trying to criticize what the NRA themselves supported in the 1968 Gun Control Act. And then there's the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988. This banned firearms that aren't detectable by walk-through metal detection systems like what you'd see at airports. The NRA admitted their support for this bill when they released a statement on Cody Wilson and Defense Distributed. We'll get to them later, but for the time being, they were saying that 3D printed plastic guns were already illegal because of this law that the NRA supported. Yay! Now the Brady Handgun Violence Protection Act, or simply the Brady Act. This law, passed in 1994, required licensed sellers to do background checks on gun purchasers and mandated a five-day waiting period between buying and actually acquiring the gun. Now, the NRA has been pretty critical of this law, even publishing an article on the ILA's website about how ineffective it has been. If you've been paying attention up to now, you should be familiar with the NRA's flip-flopping on their support for gun control bills. You see, at the time, the Brady Act was dead. All the NRA had to do was nothing, and no one would have seen or heard from it again. But instead, they revived it, with new amendments and a rewrite by them to make it more palatable to alleged gun rights supporters in Congress. This was the strategy of NRA Executive Vice President Warren Cassidy. Instead of opposing bills, just offer their own versions of the same bill instead. According to a letter written by Robert Nagel, NRA Head of Research and Information, writing on behalf of President Wayne LaPierre, freaking hell, that's a mouthful, quote, Please realize that NRA acquiesced in passage of the Brady Bill only after we achieved a number of amendments to the bill. So in case it wasn't already clear, the NRA supported and wrote the Brady Act. While I can't find any direct evidence they supported the assault weapons ban of 1994, the NRA did withdraw opposition to it, with the intent on getting votes for the Brady Act issue. In addition, Wayne LaPierre, then president of the NRA, said to Congress on May 27, 1999, that, quote, we think it's reasonable to support the Federal Gun-Free School Zones Act. Just in case it wasn't clear where they stood on allowing students and teachers to be defenseless against armed maniacs, a position they've courageously walked back now 
since it's politically advantageous to do so. The LaPierre also said this, quote, We think it's reasonable to expect full enforcement of federal firearms laws by the federal government. So they didn't have any problem with the restriction on gun ownership already present in the law and want all of these unjust and illegal laws fully enforced no matter how immoral or unjustifiable, which is especially dangerous given their repeated support for background checks, licenses, and other forms of getting people's personal information stored into centralized government databases for the state to use and abuse as they see fit. I mean, sure, LaPierre is one guy, but his continued leadership is indicative of the general attitude of the organization. Now, back on topic, the assault weapons ban covers just about every major form of gun legislation in the U.S. government. Charlton Heston's comments in 2000 when he exclaimed, From my cold, dead hands! Is really put into perspective, isn't it? But we're not done yet. January 3rd, 2019, so just a few days ago at the time of this recording, Republican Senator Marco Rubio introduced a bill into Congress to bribe states into passing their own red flag laws, making receiving new federal grants conditional on passing those laws. I did a video not long ago explaining red flag laws, but to briefly summarize, they empower family members and government employees to, if they think you might be dangerous, petition government courts to take your guns away without even the pretense of due process. Basically, it's a soft form of literal gun confiscation. Now keep in mind, this is the same Marco Rubio the New York Times said received $3.3 million in lifetime donations from the NRA. This isn't even the first time little Marco tried to pass a law like this, trying but failing, in March of 2018. Also, this is the same little Marco who went to a televised town hall event to get lectured to by paid shills and crisis actors like Daniel Bohr. I mean, it was hosted by freaking CNN. It shouldn't surprise anyone what a free-for-all crap show that was for little Marco and NBA spokeswoman Dana Lash. Given his recent legislative actions, little Marco almost certainly draws the same conclusion from the mainstream Parkland narrative and agrees with Daniel Bohr on virtually everything. This is the guy the NRA saw fit to give millions of dollars over his relatively short legislative career. Great work, NRA! Now what does this tell you about what the NRA actually thinks about red flag laws if their record of legislative support for gun control didn't signal it already? Fortunately, we don't have to make conjectures, as the NRA has openly signaled support for red flag laws, on the condition of stronger legal protections for gun owners. The conditions to be determined by legislators. In other words, the NRA is okay with literal gun confiscation as long as the government promises legal safeguards. I mentioned Defense Distributed before, the guys who popularized 3D printed guns earlier. While NRA spokeswoman Dana Lash is thrilled about it, as should anyone serious about gun rights, the NRA has taken the middle road, not condemning but not supporting it either. This kind of fence-sitting could be forgiven if we weren't talking about an organization supported by 5 million members with the purpose of defending gun rights. It's cowardice. Especially nowadays. I mean, recently, the Trump administration, through administrative fiat, banned bump stocks. With the NRA's approval! The context for the ban is that Tucker Limpdick allegedly used one attached to an AR-15 to fire into a concert in Las Vegas, killing over 50 and injuring 500 more. Even though criminals bent on breaking the law by killing people in the first place aren't going to be deterred by even more laws saying they can't use guns, let alone certain gun accessories. It's really just the latest example of the NRA seeking more gun restrictions in response to crises. Bootlegging gangsters in the cities shooting each other up during Prohibition? More gun restrictions. President Kennedy assassinated? More gun restrictions. Dozens of students murdered in Columbine? More gun restrictions. 
crazy guy shoots a crowd with a weapon under dubious circumstances? More gun restrictions! When was the last time the NRA stood on principle? When was the last time they represented their membership? Did their freaking job! At this rate, there won't be any gun owners in America left. Their failure to gain any meaningful rollback of gun restrictions over the years isn't an anomaly. It's part of an obvious and repeated pattern of behavior. Every time there's a mass shooting, the NRA gets a surge of donations and membership, and they use that money to support additional gun restrictions. They are most definitely not the gun rights group they present themselves to be. So here's what's really going on here. Anti-gun groups, state agencies, and the NRA need each other. It's a symbiotic relationship. Anti-gun groups use their villain, the NRA, to scare their donors into giving them all the monies to stop this evil, horrible boogeyman from allowing AK-15s and AR-47s being distributed at mental asylums. State agencies can claim victimhood that the NRA is making their job harder and therefore they can ask Congress for larger budgets. And finally, the NRA themselves can beseech their donors for more money to stand steadfast against the people who want to take their guns away. It's all fake. The NRA isn't here to protect your gun rights, because if they repeal all gun restrictions, they have nothing to rally their supporters against. It's all about money. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing, but the extent to which they deceive their gullible supporters is unforgivable. As far as I'm concerned, the NRA is controlled opposition, intended to deceive gun rights supporters and trick them out of their hard-earned money. Even if you don't believe me, you cannot deny the net result of the NRA's efforts has been the piecemeal eradication of your property rights and Second Amendment rights. Are they absolutely the worst in terms of gun rights? Of course not. However, if you're a dues-paying member of the NRA, stop it. Don't give them another dime. There are plenty of other things you can do with your money. Support organizations like the Gun Owners Association or Defense Distributed, which, through its popularization of 3D-printed guns, has done more for your gun rights than the NRA has in the entirety of its 140-year existence. Supporting federal registries, supporting gun licensing, supporting gun bans, supporting background checks, supporting no-gun zones, supporting bans of gun accessories, supporting gun confiscation, and supporting the enforcement of unjust, illegitimate legislation imposed on us by a coercive monopoly. If you have a friend or family member who supports the NRA, send them this video. Whether they're a voluntarist who recognizes gun rights as property rights and property rights as lizard rights and human rights too, I guess. Whether they're a constitutionalist who respects the Founding Fathers' vision and the Second Amendment or even if they're a communist who wants firearms in the hands of the proletariat, know that the NRA is not your friend. We'll find another way to secure our rights from an encroaching state, and we will do so without asking permission from either the government or a corrupt statist special interest group. And we definitely aren't going to get the government to leave our property alone just because we vote a certain way. Questions? Comments? Critique? When I began this video, I had no idea about how deep the rabbit hole went. Did you learn something new about the NRA? What's your favorite actual gun rights group? Leave a comment below. Support me on Patreon, for as long as I can still be on Patreon. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.